chord vamps. We've graduated from two chords to three chords, just like we did last month's flute cast. We did the two chord vamps, and we focused on finding the right notes by feel. We're now introducing a third chord. It's gonna come up every once in a while. Primarily, we're still alternating between two chords, but every once in a while, that third chord will come into play. And we're gonna use the same technique that we used last week. Uh, you can just jam away with this and find out the, uh, by experience the best way to play along with the track, or you can get into the new third chord, which is what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna stop this, and I'm going to bring up the D track, which is our new third chord. There it is. And we're again gonna go through. Same drill, I'm gonna go up the scale, playing each of the notes. You, see if you like each of the notes with this new chord. And then on the way down, I'm gonna do the eyebrow thing and the head thing and kind of tell you what I think of it. Here we go. three notes I don't like. It is more dissonant. Consonant. Dissonant. That's our new chord. When I hear it, I'm gonna switch to those notes. And if I do it as a mental game, it gets kind of stilted. Just try the exercise and then forget about it and naturally we'll gravitate towards the notes that work. That's the third way of doing playing over vamps, playing over changes, playing over chord changes. Those all mean the same thing. Stop this, and we're actually going to go to the three chord track that I was playing over at the beginning, the three chord vamp. Okay, and I'm going to let you in on the way I actually improvise. When I'm playing with people and I don't know where the song is going, and they're just putting the background together the guitar vamp, the keyboard vamp my style of improvisation is going to be to jam and come to rest on a note. And if I like it, I'll stay there. And if I don't, if I think it's dissonant or too dissonant for the situation, I'll move up a note or down a note. One of the things you noticed is every time I didn't like a note, its two neighbors were consonant. Every time there's a dissonant note on this instrument, pentatonic instrument, the magic thing about this pentatonic minor scale um, is that if something is dissonant, its neighbors, up or down, will be more consonant. So this is the third method of 
uh, playing over changes, uh, which kind of goes back to the first method, uh, which is just jam and play what you feel like, but I'm actually doing it a little bit more planned. I'm jamming away, and if I get to a note and I don't like it, let's say I'm gonna go up to this note. If I don't like it, I'm either gonna go or one of those two, or I could stay there and make it dissonant, but that's an intentional. Uh, that's an intentional decision as to whether I want tension at that point, where I feel like I want tension, or whether I want consonants. At the end of the song, chances are you're going to want consonants. You're going to want to come back to a place. Maybe in the middle, you're going to be a little dissonant and hold it there and then go back into consonants. This tension between consonants and dissonants, back and forth, is a beautiful thing. It's what a lot of songs are made of. So. Uh, we're going to play the, uh, the E track, A, B, C, D, E. This is the last of the tracks. And uh, in the last video, we showed where to get these tracks. We'll put the link up again. You can get all of these five tracks in uh, three keys, uh, A minor, G minor, and F sharp minor. Uh, and hopefully you have one of those flutes. Uh, if you don't, if you only have an E minor flute, try it with the A minor track. It works, uh, works quite well. Um, okay, so here we go, the backing track. I'm actually going to demo my method of playing. And I'm going to do it on the low flute this time. I'm going to change of pace. I'm just going to keep jamming. That's the flute cast for this month. See you next month. Enjoy. <laughs>